Hi, I'm Stacy Bamford from Fremont Unified School District's Student Support Services Department. Our department coordinates all enrollment for any new student coming to Fremont Unified School District. This video will talk about the 2022-2023 enrollment for elementary students. And elementary students are students who are grades TK, which is transitional kindergarten through six. We'll start with enrollment requirements. To enroll in the district, first and foremost, you must be a Fremont resident. Enrollment only takes place once you are living in Fremont. So if you're an existing uh, resident, great, you'll be ready to enroll. If you are planning to move to Fremont, then you cannot enroll until you are physically living here. So once you your move is complete, then you are welcome to enroll. For grade placement, we base it on California Department of Education guidance, and they have a grade chart um, based on birth dates that would say based on birth date what grade the child would be in. That is found on our website uh, as well if you wanted to refer to that. For kindergarten for the 22-23 school year, it is eligible for students who turned five before September 2nd, 2022. For TK, which is our transitional pro kindergarten program, it is for students who turn five between September 2nd 2022 and February 2nd, 2023. California has changed their TK birth date range uh, to February before it ended in December. They are phasing in additional months of TK over the next four years to then have TK available for students turning five after September 2nd. This is a glossary that we've put together with common words we use in the district when we talk about enrollment and school placement. Boundary area, this is the neighborhood area assigned to any given school. Every single address in Fremont is tied to a boundary area. The home school, this is what we refer to as the school that is assigned to your specific address. Lottery, this is the process of determining which students get a seat at the home school when more students have enrolled for that school than there are physical seats available. The lottery is only done for kindergarten and students who enroll during the primary and priority enrollment time period will have their names uh, placed into that lottery. Names are then drawn to determine who gets seats at that home school and then continue to be drawn to form the wait list. Even if your child is on the wait list, they will get a seat in one of our Fremont Unified Schools. So if they're not at their home school, we will place them somewhere else until a seat does become available at the home school. Overload school. This is what we call the school that your student would get placed at if they did not get a seat at their home school. Your child would remain at that school until a seat became available at their home school. A wait list. This is that list generated based on the lottery. So it first starts in kindergarten and it's based on drawing kids' uh, names in order. Once the wait list is established, any new enrollments, those students will go to the bottom of the wait list. Um, at any time that a school fills up at any grade level, the next person enrolled would go on a wait list and be placed at another school. Call back. This is the process of calling the first student back on the from the wait list when a seat becomes available at the school site. Callbacks happen all year long as soon as we learn of a student dropping. So here's our enrollment timeline. The first piece I wanna talk about is sibling priority. So sibling priority is based on family who have currently have students enrolled in elementary school. The basis of this is to keep siblings together so that parents aren't trying to take kids from one school to another. So if you have a child currently enrolled in Fremont, grades TK to 
four or five, so that's their current grade this year. Then for next year, we would look at uh, sibling priority for your incoming student for 2022-23. That priority timeline is January 11th through February 25th. If you complete the enrollment during that window, then if your child is kindergarten, the new child is kindergarten, they will have a priority seat at their home school. If your child, new child is grades one to five or six, and that's depending, the, the five or six is depending on if you're in an area where there's a middle school, which starts at sixth grade, or a junior high, which starts at seventh grade, <clears throat> that um, the point of this is to have the kids at the same school. So if you have a student moving on to middle school, then they wouldn't have, uh, the new student wouldn't have a priority. But for your older student um, grades, you will have an earlier enrollment date when placements occurs, occurs in June. So open enrollment will start March 1st. So you, your child will have a higher enrollment date, an earlier enrollment date um, than the open enrollment. Priority enrollment. So this is for new students, uh, no siblings already in elementary school, or maybe there's siblings who are in high school, middle school. Priority enrollment window is January 11th to February 25th, and this is for grades TK and kindergarten only. Students who enroll during this time period will be included for the lottery um, if that's required for their homeschool site. Um, otherwise, if a lottery is not required, then they would get placement at their homeschool. Important, we have this as a priority window because during this timeline, we will get about 2,000 enrollments in. There's no possible way that we can process 2,000 enrollments on January 11th. So everybody who enrolls during this window has equal priority. It does not help your child's chance of getting in if you are the first appointment on January 11th, or if you're the last appointment on January or February 25th, it doesn't hurt your chance of getting in. Everyone has equal status during this enrollment window. So please don't feel like you have to um, spend all night refreshing your browser to get the best appointment. Any appointment during that window uh, will give your child equal priority. Additional enrollment pieces, um, open enrollment starts March 1st. So this will be any student uh, grades TK through five or six. So if you don't have a sibling and you're grades one to five or one to six for next year, then you would enroll during this timeline starting March 1st. If you haven't moved to Fremont yet and you don't, you're not going to make it in that January 11th to February 25th timeline, that's okay. We'll have this enrollment ongoing so you'll be able to enroll your child after March 1st throughout whenever whenever you move into Fremont and we'll get your child placed in a school. If any of you also have secondary students, so this would be middle school, junior high, or high school students, March 1st is also when the enrollment period opens. And for our secondary students, placement is at the home school. So talking about the enrollment procedure. First thing, we need you to get some documents ready. The enrollment is done online, so these documents will need to be saved to the vice you'll, you will be completing the form on. We need proof of student birth. So this could be a birth certificate, a passport, a baptismal certificate. We need the student's immunization record. And then we need some proof of residency documents. So we need two proofs of living in Fremont, and these need to be dated within the last 30 to 45 days. They can be your lease, it could be a mortgage statement, utility bill, pay stub, official government mailing, which includes DMV documents. Access the online enrollment form from the district enrollment website. If you're new to Fremont, then there is a new parent guardian online enrollment link. You would use that and start your application. If you are a parent of a current Fremont Unified School District student, you'll use your parent portal account to access the enrollment page, and you'll enroll through the, the parent portal. Important, 
Once you complete your application and you hit submit, you will get an email from Infinite Campus. That email will let you know that your application has been submitted and there will be a link for you to schedule a virtual appointment. Submitting the application does not mean that you've enrolled or applied for Fremont Unified. Your enrollment is not complete until you have a virtual appointment. In that virtual appointment, the enrollment technician will confirm all of your information and they will need to see your photo ID to confirm that you are the person who um, they are speaking with. At that point and only at that point when that is complete, the technician will let you know that your enrollment is complete. So please make sure that you check for that email after you submit your application. School placement. So during the enrollment process for elementary, your child will not be placed at a school. Placement comes only after we've established the availability at each school site for each grade level. As mentioned previously, in the event that there's not space at your home school, your child's going to be overloaded to a school with space. When we have to overload, we do try and keep the students as close to their home school as possible and within the attendance area. Unfortunately, it's not always able to, to work out that way, but that's what we try for. Parents do not have a, a chance to pick a pref preferred school to be overloaded to. Typically in a year, we'll overload about 800 students. And logistically, there's no way that we can take preferences from parents or, or even prioritize which parent should have priority to a, a preferred school. So we make the placements whenever there is an overload. Placement is done by enrollment date and time with the exception of that kinder priority and the lottery. Again, if your student is overloaded, they'll be on a wait list for the homeschool and they'll be called back in order of that wait list. We try to do placements for uh, the kindergarten based on the lottery and based on priority enrollment by April 1st and notify families of that. For students who will be overloaded from kindergarten, those notifications usually go out in June. And the reason we wait for that is because once parents get the notification of where their child's placed um, and through June, families are changing their mind. Maybe they don't want their child to go to kindergarten with us. Maybe they're going to pick private school. Maybe they've moved out of the area. So we see a lot of drops from the time we start enrollment in January until June. So we wait to do those overload place, placements because frequently students are already placed back at their home school before we do that overload in June. And that way there's not too much confusion with parents of, of trying to set up things based on an overload school when really they're gonna be back at their home school. And as soon as we know of a home school placement, we do notify the parent. For students grade one to six, we cannot do placement until the school year ends. So school year ends the first week of June. We can't look at placements until after that when we see how many vacant seats um, are left at the end of the school year of kids who have been continually attending. At that point, we will start filling any open seats and notify families of the placements. We do have a, spe a couple special programs in Fremont Unified. We have the immersion program. Um, it is in Spanish and it is in Azaveda. Currently, it's the Spanish programs located at Blakeau, Grimmer, and Vallejo Mill. And the Mandarin program um, is actually located at Azaveda or Blakeau currently. There are conversations as of today, which is December 2nd, 2021, with our board in looking at unifying these programs to one school. That has been undetermined for the 2022-2023 school, school year at this point. Immersion, though, that program is uh, an alternative education model, which will provide students fluency and literacy in two languages. Um, the program and these programs, all students develop literacy in the target language first, and then gradually the addition of English. The important thing to note, these programs aren't just for Spanish speakers or Mandarin speakers, these programs are available for anyone. So as students begin the program, they're going to be learning um, in the Spanish or the Mandarin, and then English will be brought in. 
This program is offered for students in grade kindergarten through eight. So if you have a TK student age, um, they're not yet eligible, but you'd be able to apply in kindergarten for that program. These applications will be available on January 11th online, and then you will submit the form online as well. For the science magnet, this is at Maddox Elementary. And for the science magnet, this isn't a separate program necessarily. At Maddox, their whole school, the whole curriculum is based on um, integrating science across the curriculum. So as students are doing language arts, they're going to be reading texts that will be science-based at times. So it's an integration of science throughout the, the curriculum. For this program, also the applications are available on January 11th online, and they'll be submitted online. Because this is across the entire school, for the science magnet, we need to look at how many homeschool students fill Maddox first, and then if there's space available, then students will be um, pulled from those science magnet applications. We will put those applications um, in order based on the time that we get them to fill a wait list. And then as seats become available, we will offer those seats to families. <clears throat> so just some final enrollment tips. When you are enrolling and you get to the application, make sure that you select the correct year. When you go into the application, there'll be two school years present available, the current year, which is 21-22, and then next year, 22-23. Please make sure that you select the 22-23 school year, so that way we get your um, application in the appropriate time. Likewise, when you set your enrollment appointment, the virtual appointment, there'll be two years, 2021-22, that's for current year only, 2020 to 2023, so for next year student, two different appointment types. Please make sure that you're selecting the 2022-2023 school year um, so that we can get you to the appropriate enrollment technician and there's no delay in the enrollment. Again, enrollments are finalized when all of the documents have been received by our department and you've had your virtual appointment. Existing residency in Fremont is required for enrollment, so you must currently reside here. Being an escrow or having a future lease does not establish residency. To help in the meeting, the name of the parent or guardian that's on the proof of residency should be the one attending this virtual meeting. Just makes it go a little smoother to connect the dots. Doesn't have to be that way though. Um, if, the, it's, if the parent cannot be at the meeting, um, if they are also the guardian that's on the birth certificate, that will work. And again, big reminder, during the TK kindergarten priority enrollment, there is no priority based on your appointment date and time. Any student who is enrolled during that window will have priority to their home seat or to the lottery if that lottery is needed. So please don't think that you need to stay up all night to get your application submitted and an appointment created for January 11th. As a parent of young kids, you have enough to worry about. Get your sleep and just make sure that you have an uh, appointment date set between January 11th and February 25th. So that's the crux of the information. If you have other questions, you can email sss at fustk12.net or you can uh, find virtual office hours that I will be hosting. They're available through our website. You can check those out and come in and ask any questions. What I've learned from doing these presentations over the year is that even though the information's here, parents second guess themselves or wanna just make sure that they're not missing out on anything. So please feel free to email or drop into the virtual appointment hours to get any of the questions that you have answered. Thank you very much and have a good day.